Yeah. Welcome yeah. to the ATP Project. You're with your host, Steve and Nick, who's, I don't know, on some sort of drug today. <laughs> She's know. just crying a little bit. I am crying a little bit. I'm just, we were having a bit of a laugh before. <laughs> we were laughing, laughing before. Continuing. But it's, fu- it's funny you mentioned it because today we're actually going to be talking about how our face looks and our looks and anti-aging skin and anti-aging looks really is what we're talking about today. It's a weird yeah. one, isn't it? It is a weird one. We're actually going to do a two-parter. Yeah, I know. Anti-aging. I know. So... So, guys, hang around for part two, which will be following yes. <laughs> whenever this one comes out. It'll be a week after that because we've got some really interesting stuff to talk about um, to do with anti-aging. But today we're doing external the talk, appearance talk about looks. of how we can, how we can um, improve our looks as we get older. Yeah. Mm. Now, we all want to look younger. Um, you know, not well, not me or you, Nick, because we're yeah. in our 20s and That's we're right, gorgeous. So if, you, if you're listening and you don't watch, we're, we're absolutely stunning. Yeah, if, um, and, and don't watch then if you're only listening. <laughs> you can tell we're lying. We, we can lie. Yeah, if you watch, sorry, we're lying. Um, but, but you know, look, you know I, I'm in my early 50s, almost mid-50s. So, so at that age, you, you do show signs of aging. Like, let's be honest, I've got the grey hair. Yeah. I've got the, the wrinkles. I've got plenty of – we've got a ball patch or – you know, mm. and then people are funny about that, and mm. and and people are are wanting to look younger. Now yeah. we're, we're going to be talking about anti aging inside later, but this is all about looks. This one this is all about the outside. Yeah, it's the inside. So yeah. And I hate to say this, but women typically care more about their appearance than men. Obviously, look at me. Yes, they do. They do. And uh, again, when you you know nearly fifty, it does it does. Take Who's nearly turn. fifty? Oh, I don't know. Somebody. No, somebody. Let, let's somebody. say you were nearly. 50. Say I was theoretically um, nearly fifty. Yes. In a few then months. You, yeah. <laughs> you do. There, you do notice some things changing. So, um, so yes, trying to do the best we can to look younger for longer. Is mm. what we all want, isn't it? Of course. So the first thing we talk about is wrinkles. This is the elephant in the room. So what makes us look a bit older and we start losing collagen in our face where our cheek size reduces and, mm. um, you know, we start to get older and more wrinkles and all the other things I talked about. So, so I mean, we're going to talk about this podcast about ways of reversing the way we appear yes. with ageing. Internal ageing is another kettle of fish, as you correctly point out. We're doing that next. So mm. so this is all about looks. Yes. So, so if you if you... Comments at the bottom of this podcast saying they talk nothing about the internal aging. Of course, we're not. We're going to the next podcast. Next podcast yeah. So, so this is all about looking younger. Yeah. Now, now you know, there's plenty of things that women do to look younger. There's plenty of facial creams. Um, there's plenty of internal things we can do. Now, was, I've got a few literature, a, a bit of studies in front of me here about some really cool ingredients. I've picked mm. the top three, yeah, which which really do reduce. And I've just picked on on, on wrinkles. Mm. But but um, you know, there's there's lots of things like. Um, um, Botox, we're going to talk about that too, and fillers and all that yeah. sort of stuff. We're going to talk about some natural, some not, not, not so natural. Yeah. Different ways to go about it. Exactly. Mm. Now, now, what makes us age, we better talk about the, the, the nasties, what, what can age us faster? Excessive skin exposure is a classic aging one. Yeah. Excessive. Yeah. You know, exposure, not skin yeah. exposure. Oh, that's right. What did I say? Skin, <laughs> skin exposure. exposure. Yeah. Well, excessive God, skin you... exposure might get you in trouble for something else. Possibly. For something else. Yes, <laughs> no. yes. Yeah, no, I've got a meeting with HR after this. About <laughs> yeah. no, no, I haven't got a meeting with HR. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, don't get me in trouble. But, um, but yeah, exactly. Too much sun is a bad thing. Uh, not enough sun is a bad thing. We did a big podcast, but it was one of my favorites a few months ago on how under sun exposure is very bad for you yeah, and can increase the rates of certain cancers. Yep. Over sun exposure is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to pick on the sun from that angle where we get too much UV light, yep. which stands for ultraviolet light. That's right. Ultraviolet light is light you can't see. And it, it's a shorter wavelength than violet mm-hmm. because violet is a, a, a short wavelength light. Mm-hmm. And you go beyond that, we can't see it. And it's ultraviolet, we're beyond violet, and that causes photo aging of the skin. There's ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B. Yep. So, um, you know, we have to be aware of that. Mm. But we don't want to be underexposed to the sun. Now, mm. on the weekend, I was probably a bit overexposed because we did a, th- a big thing outdoors for two days, and I got a bit cooked from that. Mm. Um, you've got your one. One nine hundred voice on today. I know. It's a bit croaky. I, I sound a bit croaky. A little, bit, a little bit hoarse. I know. I'm just trying to sound sexy for the ladies. <laughs> it's not working, is it? It's not working. <laughs> What's uh, the videographer just took his ear, mate. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no. I'll, I'll have another meeting with HR. So <laughs> you know, I got a second meeting. Um, uh, but let, let's try and look younger. Now, I've got I've got three things that I want to run by you to start with, which mm. which are really good supplements we can take 
to reduce wrinkles. Now, these are taking supplements. I know there's creams, there's mm-hmm. night cream, there's day cream. As I go to a pharmacy and there's nine billion types oh, of creams so there. So many creams. Probably yeah. the most common cream is hyaluronic acid. Yes. Now, hyaluronic acid is is what they call hydrophilic. Mm-hmm. Philia is Greek for friend. So mm-hmm. it sucks water to the area. So if you put it on your face, mm-hmm. it sucks water there and you get a, a plumper cheek mm-hmm. or you get a, you get plumped out um, wrinkles. Yes. So reduce wrinkles. So what would happen, do you think, if you took it orally? Oh, well, if you took it orally, you might get even a better result. Well, you do You're get better. You're going to tell better. me what happens if you oh, take it orally, aren't well, you? I'm not going to tell you. There's this beautiful 12-week double-blind placebo-controlled study found that when you take oral um, hyaluronic or hyaluronic acid, it improves mm-hmm. your skin dramatically. Now, here's the catchphrase. This was published um, you know, in 2021 in Nutrients, which is quite a, a big journal. Mm. And, and the study there, what they did with this one is they took um, 40... Um, sort of middle-aged people, men and women, 35 to 64, so I'm middle-aged. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not, you're in your 20s. I am, yeah. Yep, so there we go. Mm-hmm. So it was a double-blind placebo-controlled uh, trial. So the other people, you know, half of them took a tablet, half of them didn't. You know, they took a placebo tablet. Now, after 12 weeks, what they found was that the skin condition was significantly improved in terms of wrinkle assessment, uh, the water content, the transepidermal uh, water loss and elasticity compared to the placebo group. So the hyaluronic acid group improved their face dramatically. Mm. So that's quite remarkable. And that, again, placebo. You didn't know you were taking it, you know. So, mm. so now here's the catch. You need 120 milligrams. Yeah. That's a big dose. It's a big so dose. when you're supplementing with this orally, make sure it's at least 120 milligrams. Mm. And it takes about 8 to 12 weeks to work. Mm-hmm. But it improves the wrinkles from the inside out. You know what I love about that? I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at my face as I'm doing it. But it improves your skin throughout your body. It does, yes, because your hyaluronic acid is all throughout your body, not yeah. just in your skin. So I've got a, a couple of cool little facts, mm, cool little things here with it. about hyaluronic acid. Um, so as we're talking about anti-aging and in our next podcast, we're talking about internal aging, mm. but um, it's been found to be abundant in long living organisms. So Whoa. animals, um, worms, things like that, things like that. Um, there's a, I've done a lot of my research from a guy called David Sinclair, who's an amazing anti-aging scientist. Mm. He's an Australian, but he lives in America. He's got a book out. I'll give it a plug, Longevity is the name of the book because I did book. some research out of that, but pulled some really good things out of it. Um, and he actually has a <laughs> had a little anecdotal story. Yeah. And one of his children is now working in a lab in America, oh. following his footsteps. And they have um, an, <laughs> a naked mole rat. Oh, seen yeah. a naked mole They've rat. seen a naked mole rat. Yeah. You so don't want to see it. Looking don't creature. Google it. Do not Google it. You'll end no. up in HR department like I. Yeah, it's not. It's not good. I won't say how he described it because that's probably X-rated. Oh, but go he and say it. it. What, how did he describe it? He described it as looking like um, <laughs> a condom full of walnuts. Oh, I didn't know it was going to be that bad. <laughs> no, that's what he said. <laughs> oh, okay. This is not my words. This is the, the day said that. So that's okay. Um, so anyway, so they did a little bit of an experiment and they took the um, some cells from a mm-hmm. naked mole rat yep. and removed all the hyaluronic acid. Yep. Um, and then what that what happened from there is it caused the cells to divide and become more cancerous. Wow. So that looks like hyaluronic acid is actually um, protective from cancers as well. Jeez. So having it all throughout our body. What a great idea. So if we can increase our levels. Mm. We're not only going to be getting the benefit from the skin, but possibly even some um, anti-cancer benefits as well. Oh, I love that because that, that's a double whammy. That'll help your skin. You'll look great. You'll look you know, younger and all that sort of stuff. But it will help you. you know. And this is what I love. I mean, th- there are other treatments that, that we're going to talk about which, which just treat the skin and mm. do nothing for the rest of the body, like, like Botox, for example. Yeah. Um, but, but isn't that remarkable that mm. hyaluronic acid, uh, it's found in all the cells that diminishes as we age. Yep. So um, that's, and, and that's incredible. Mm. That's incredible. Yeah. I've got another one for you, different one to pronounce. Yep. It's called astaxanthin. Astaxanthin. Mm. I love ants, oh, astaxanthin. Yeah. It's, it's a really interesting uh, colored agent. You find it in all the, all the algae and everything too. It's a really incredible thing. Now, now just the skin at this stage mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll go on to the rest of it. There's been um, a major review released on this, a systemic review of clinical studies. Now, systemic reviews are the highest form of evidence. Mm-hmm. They're a review of all the clinical trials that are on the particular topic. And to cut to the chase, 
they, they found that astaxanthin was remarkable in, in preventing against UV damage. Yes. Now, it's a fat-soluble agent, so it hangs around the body. Mm. Um, the only problem is you need three to six milligrams a day. Okay. But if you take that, you will reduce the, the appearance of wrinkles. Mm. Um, and um, there were six randomized um, controlled trials, the blind placebo. Uh, many of the randomized controlled trials uh, found that astaxanthin supplementation improved skin texture, appearance, and reduced the wrinkles and improved the moisture content. Uh, it also protected against UV damage. And there was no adverse effects. So again, astaxanthin, a carotenoid, which is a really cool agent. That's right. Is really good for your skin. It reduces wrinkles. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? How good is that? Yeah, it's so good. I mean, what have I I got about it? I think I've got pretty much the same stuff as you. Twenty-three in a randomized controlled trial. Yep. Twenty-three healthy healthy Japanese participants were recruited to take four milligrams of astaxanthin or placebo daily for ten weeks. Yep. Um, and the study was designed to assess the protective role of astaxanthin um, against sun damage. Mm-hmm. So subjects received a test of UV-induced u- u- urethemia. Urethemia, <laughs> which is a burning of the skin, Sorry, yeah. I'm just really struggling with my words today. Um, on their back. So the astaxanthin group had reduced loss of skin moisture in the irradiated area compared to those um, in the placebo group. So, uh, and also the, the subjective assessments of skin health improved, including improvement of rust skin and texture in the non irradiated areas. Wow. So, that's so it improved the, the area. Isn't that group. good? Yeah. But again, astaxanthin is a carotenoid. It's very good yeah, for you anyway. It's really good for we, you. We can talk about anti aging inside, but we're really mm-hmm. focusing on the skin this time. Yeah. It's remarkable that, that six, or in this case, four milligrams, mm-hmm. which is the ideal dose you really yeah. want. Um, every day, just to improve your skin appearance is, is remarkable. It's a pretty yeah. simple thing to do. Yeah. So, so far, I've got two very simple things to do, um, but probably the third and, and the best one, mm. in my opinion. Yeah. You're going to say it. It's a type of collagen. It is a type of collagen. Called Verisol. Yeah. Now, Verisol is, is a... Because you've got to remember that, that, that collagen diminishes in your skin as you age. Yep. Now, we've done lots of podcasts on collagen, mm-hmm. and we've talked about it with regards to your muscles and your joints and all sorts of stuff. But this is specifically for your skin. It's a Verisol type. Yes. You need two and a half grams of it. Mm. And there's been numerous studies mm. showing that it improves the, the skin. Uh, one study that I'll talk about um, was published back in 2014, a randomized controlled trial, where they gave uh, people aged 45 to 65, again, not us, we're in our 20s. That's right. They received 2.5 grams of um, the the Verisol uh, collagen or a placebo once a day for 58 weeks. Uh, sorry, for eight weeks, 58. 58 weeks. 58. Well, I just made that number up. Eight <laughs> weeks. And 57 subjects um, basically in each group. And what they found was after, after four to eight weeks, there was a noticeable improvement in the wrinkles, the elasticity of the um, skin, and the increase in pro collagen one. Wow. So it helps you grow your own collagen back. Yeah, how amazing is that? I, I love that. Uh, and there was a statistically significant reduction in eye wrinkle volume. So you know those oh. crow feet you get? Yeah. No, you would no, know. I don't know what no, you're talking about. I don't know. No, no one knows about crow's feet. <laughs> um, so, so it removes that r- r- remarkably, you know. Uh, I'm so, so, I mean, you've got these three things we've talked about. We've got Verisol. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got the astaxanthin. Yep. And we've got hyaluronic acid. Yep. If you can take those three things every day, mm. you're going to have a remarkable improvement on the wrinkles and, and your skin health. That's right. Just from doing that. Yeah. Imagine if you could get them all in one go. Even better. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Think you can, Steve. I don't know. Check around. You never we'll know. Around. Yeah, I'm sure there is something out there like that. Um, yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? And how easy is that? But it's, it, it, again, it's, it's good for you anyway. Yeah. But it's not like you're taking something that's potentially dangerous. Yeah. But it's good for you, your body, mm. but it's great for your skin. Yeah. And if you can do those three things, you're going to reduce your wrinkle appearance dramatically. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's amazing. And so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Easy to do. Yeah. Now, now people with skin, uh, let's people face with it. Skin. People, people <laughs> with skin. people without skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people with wrinkles, uh, but people with skin with wrinkles, um, most of them don't do this stuff. They use creams, yeah. Which, which of course, you got to remember. Where does the skin? Does it go from the outside in or the inside out? That's exactly right. It yeah. goes from the inside out. So, yeah. if you're getting this stuff loaded into the body, mm. then it'll grow and it'll grow throughout the whole body everywhere. Yeah. But let's just let's just have a look at the skin deep things. There, there are a lot of people these days are taking Botox. Mm. And we've done long podcasts with my father-in-law, Dr. Douglas Gross, who's, who's uh, 
a doctor and does injectables every day. Mm. Okay, that's pretty much what he does and has done it for decades. Mm -hmm. And and he talks about Botox. Now, what Botox does, it's a botulinum toxin. It sounds awful. It does sound awful. Yeah, but but if you inject it into, say, your crow's feet and the side of your eye, it paralyzes the muscle so the muscle relaxes Mm. and doesn't do anything because it just... It becomes dead, doesn't work. Mm. And then, of course, after two to three months, it, the, the muscle starts working again, so you get your wrinkles back. Yeah. So it's an injectable form of botulinum toxin, which can therefore, um, you know, just paralyze muscle. It's disport. There's a few other different types. Mm. But that's just all about appearances. Yeah, and it doesn't actually – it doesn't help the skin. It doesn't um, uh, reduce the aging of your skin. Mm. It just obviously changes the, the – um, the visual effect of Botox. I've had a life. family member that, that in her early 20s started taking Botox. Can you believe that? I can believe that because I think that's not an uncommon thing. Really? Yeah. Scarily, I don't think it is. An, and same with, with plastic surgery in your 20s. When really? When you're getting plastic surgery in their 20s, which I kind of understand why. Um, and they actually, in my opinion, look a little older than if you get it done when you do start to age. So if you do want to get some sort of plastic surgery done and you're starting to age, it can have a better f- visual effect than someone in their 20s getting it What done. sort of procedures are you talking about? Like which, which ones do they typically get, the younger ones? Like uh, Botox? And- oh, they, there's a lot getting Botox. Yep. A lot getting Botox. I don't... Um, well... <laughs> Lip fillers is a big one, isn't it? Oh, that's, yeah. I think we're going to be really unpopular by saying this because there's a lot of people that do it. Nothing wrong with it. No judgment. Do, do, don't. I'm going to judge them. It's oh, terrible. Okay. You because judge and I if, if you, no, no. If, if you ever watched, uh, like, like, you know, I watch Telly with the wife and uh, 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 an ad comes on for that, that math show. <laughs> yeah. Every woman in there has got extraordinarily way too much filler. Yeah. It looks so but unnatural. I think that's what I'm sort of trying to get at is that getting the fillers and all these mm. things done when you're young, it looks very uh, unnatural. Yeah. Whereas when you're older and you possibly need a little bit of it, it just enhances and, and it enhances you and it sort of makes you look a little bit younger. Yep. But doing it when you don't need it, it can look quite odd. Oh, yeah. These these people look like they're in their 20s. Yeah. And it would, they, they look odd. I mean, I'm sorry to say that. We it's might, just... Like, I'm clearly not someone that does anything girly. I'm just not a girly girl. But I did the nails and I did the eyelashes for about three months. And both of them were just way too much work for me. Yeah, you don't have nails. No, you I don't, don't have nails. nails. I haven't had nails for a long time. I just cut them short. But um, you ha- I didn't realise when you got nails, this is how much I don't do this stuff. You have to get them refilled all the time. Do you? And it's just like toe toe time consuming. Hurt your nails, and it's then tough being the a girl. eye thing, the eyelash thing, you have to get them refilled. And I'm like, this is just way too much work. Really? So I ditched it. Yeah, that was about ten years ago. <laughs> and then I'm just like, nah, God. I'm just going to stay natural. Thanks. It's just much easier and cheaper, to be honest. Yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive. Like as I said, um, you know, Botox is is a quite expensive procedure. As I said, no, I know my, my father in law, and, and it, the, the actual stuff costs them a lot of money. Mm. It's not just like it; it's just you're paying for the doctor, you pay for the actual stuff. Mm. It's quite expensive stuff, and filler is more, even more expensive. Yeah, wow! I, did, I wouldn't know how much so, they are. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah, you can get um, uh, like cheek fillers too. Ah, oh. you know, because what do girls say? There's a saying that ever all girl wants fatter cheeks and fatter eyelashes. I don't know, but you keep telling me I have fat cheeks. So well, you do know. a bit. Be, yeah, you haven't <laughs> had any filler, have you? No, I've had oh, nothing. Okay. I've had like, nothing done to my face yet. Yeah, there you <laughs> yeah, go. Probably. I always say I won't. And I, I often, my, when I was younger, I said, no, I never would. But when you start to age, you're like, mm, maybe. Maybe. Just <laughs> Give it another up. 10 years and see how things are going. I've got to but, pick my face up off the floor. Then but Botox possibly. is not a drastic thing anymore. It's a common thing that, you know, people used to hide from it and all that sort of mm. stuff. Now, I think it's a completely reasonable idea if that's what you wanted to get rid of. Yeah, look, um, each, each to their own and do whatever you want to do to make yourself look and feel better. It's no... no. Now, now, also on skin, and I probably didn't talk about this before the podcast, is there's, there's ways we can... You know, the um, there's two types of fat, right? There's visceral fat, which mm-hmm. is bad for our internal ageing. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. But then there's subcutaneous fat. Yeah. Which is the fat that sits under your skin that makes you look unsightly um, in your swimsuit. You know what I mean? It, it's mm-hmm. It's kind of like a... You know, blobs that sort of you know around your waist or your hips or so something. Like, like, 
So you light's one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so light's one of them. Now, there are things we can do to get rid of those things. And we did a podcast on this about a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, there was a, there were there were five things we, we looked at. The first one was liposuction. Mm-hmm. We looked at cold fusion, and we looked at injectable dissolving fat, and we looked at two procedures which are minimally invasive, mm-hmm. but can work to get rid of that subcutaneous fat, like the fat that just sits, you know, your love handles yeah. or your little belly thing. Not your mm-hmm. belly thing, but mm-hmm. you got you know no fat on you at all. But if you have a little bit hanging off. Yes. Um, there's there's things we, we can use now. Now the first one we talked about was laser. Mm. So at it, certain wavelengths of laser, you can actually get the it, it actually and it's been peer reviewed. You can actually sort of put the laser on the skin and it causes the skin to release fat cells into the lymphatic system and therefore into the blood system. Mm. So there's certain lasers at at six thirty five nanometers and at 1080 nanometers, where if you can get a laser at those types, then it will mobilize fat out of that particular area to give your skin and, and, and tighten your skin up and move the fat underneath it. Mm. So that's pretty remarkable, wow, isn't it? it is remarkable. Well, you know, and, 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 and all you've got to do is, is when you have the treatment and you go for a walk, run, swim, gym, bike ride, whatever the hell it is, to burn the fat off. I was going to say once it's taken out, you then you've got to get rid of it. So yeah. You're going to have to do some get off your get up and get moving because we, we used to have a product here and i can talk about it because it's gone it doesn't exist mm, anymore a long, was, long time ago that yeah was subcut mm. we did the same thing it, it just mobilized fat it didn't melt it mm. and lasers don't melt it don't don't think of a laser going pew, pew, like star wars in 1977 <laughs> blasting fat away it just moves it causes it to leak out of the cells but mm. that's what you want to do because mm. the subcutaneous fat the unsightly fat under your skin looks mm. You know, it looks a bit bad. Everyone mm. grabs it and, you know, mm. it's like, I don't want this there. Yeah. Uh, and it's very tough to get rid of. Mm. It's, it's very, it's full of white fat, which is a type of fat that's non, non-metabolizing. Yeah. yeah. And so laser is a really good way to move that if you want to appear, your appearances to look good. Mm. Um, so that's a good one too. Mm. Now, the other one is um, called fat cavitation. Yeah. What do you know? What are you laughing no, about? No, I remember. I, I do remember the podcast. So oh, yeah. Yes, I do remember talking about. Well, this is a weird one. This gives you like it's about thirty to fifty hertz, and it goes, yeah. and it gets the fat and and basically vibrates it out of the fat cells. Yeah. So what? It, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a good idea in a way, isn't it? Yeah. If, if you, I mean, look, if it's non, it's not invasive. Is it painful? No. No, well, there you go. No, but, but fat freezing is apparently quite uh, painful. Uh, pa- yeah, fat freezing I've heard is quite painful. Yeah, because yeah. they drop the fat to negative 10 or 11 degrees Celsius mm. and it freezes the fat, mm. which causes the fat to to sort of um, basically the fat cells to die, some of them. Mm. So you have to go back and back and back and back and you, you freeze these things and, mm. yeah, it's quite a – I've seen it done and it sucks the fat up into like a – I like a, I'll call it a vice. Mm. It sucks it into a vice and then freezes it. Mm. I know. Yeah. So, so if you're going to look at those sort of things, look at fat cavitation mm-hmm. and also um, laser therapy yeah. for moving those unsightly fat things and cellulite. Mm. It gets rid of cellulite too. Okay. There so the only other natural medicine I know that gets rid of cellulite is Verisol. Mm-hmm. It reduces the appearance of cellulite because it rebuilds the cell structure that's collapsed yes, that's with right. the cellulite. Yeah. Liposuction will too. I oh, know. No. No. I've seen that obviously done in TV, and that does not look pleasant. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I, mean, I, I know. I'd rather go for a run. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, you know, this is all about appearances. Oh, what I will say about liposuction what? is, and I have seen this myself m- multiple times. So even though this is anecdotal, I've mm. seen studies. Um, liposuction, it can come back, and you can get fat deposits come back in different areas. Yes. And it's very common. Mm. So I've I've known people that have had sort of fat hanging off the side of their their um, thigh, like down near their knee. Yeah. Um, I've seen someone else with a fat deposit on their back. Wow. So it can actually come back in strange little deposits in places, like a, like a ball. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's do, one do thing know what I happens there? It's quite interesting because normally if, if, if you know, if I, if I put on weight, everyone says, if I put on weight, I get it on my insert part, body part, mm-hmm. ass, gut, mm-hmm. whatever. And for me, it's my gut, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say I had liposuction, no liposuction, but let's say I had liposuction on my gut and I got rid of all the fat cells mm-hmm. out of my gut mm-hmm. and I was still wanted to be a fat slob and eat junk food and not exercise. Well, it's gonna, the fat's going to be stored somewhere else. Yeah. So if I haven't got all those fat cells that have been that are now sitting in a jar beside the bed. <laughs> okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you've seen the tube. I have the, yep. <laughs> you know, it was only discovered in the 70s, this. Was it was it? a relatively new procedure. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and they do it now. You don't need a general anaesthetic anymore. Oh, no. 
They give no. you a midazolam and fentanyl. No. Sorry, no, no. I've seen no. I couldn't no. even. Oh, no, I know. I, I know even. it's a nut, but but let's but but let's just think of the idea for a sec. <laughs> let's say you've got like you know, let's say I've got a bit of fat on my gut and I hate it, and it, I've, I've exercised, I've tried to get rid of it. Let's hypothetical, mm-hmm. okay? If I can get it in a jar sitting beside me in half an hour, mm. where it's never going to bother me again, it's sitting there. Mm. In a way, that's attractive, isn't it? Um, not the jar itself, I'm sure, but yeah, yeah, look, I guess, I guess so. Yes, I mean, I'm, st- I'm terrified of everything. I'm, I cut myself, and I don't even like it. So I've never had any. You've service. never had a stainless steel rod shoved into your stomach and shuffled around like a vacuum cleaner. No, have you seen the procedure? Not, I, I have seen the procedure. Is why I don't think I'd ever want to get it done, particularly if I wasn't knocked out. And I never want to be knocked down. They, so. they disassociate you. Medavslam is a disassociative anaesthetic, yeah. so it, you're still conscious. You can still maintain your own airways, but you're sort of out of it. And then there's laser liposuction. Mm. So the laser shoots out and melts the fat and then gets sucked up. I mean, you know, yeah. no, you, you and I may not be into this, and we're, we're into the health of the body, yeah. but there are a lot of people, massive industries that do this, Yeah. that they say, I'm sick of this, insert body part, mm. I want it fixed now, and it gives you immediate results, mm. you know. So people want these, and people have pla- people have way more drastic plastic surgery than that to make oh, themselves. Well, I mean, I've seen a facelift happen in the yeah. past, and I don't know how that how people would have your face peeled off and then pulled back. I just, <laughs> I, I know that. Come on, that's I'm a not, simple thing. Oh no, I mean, I'm just funny like that. I do not, I can't. That sort of stuff makes my stomach go funny. I've had plastic I surgery in my nose. When I was 18, I, I smashed it when I was 14, and it was all bent and out of shape, so I had to have plastic surgery on my nose. Really? Yeah, it's yeah, still But that was for an um, anatomical issue. Not, not a, not a, <laughs> it, was, not a, it was a major one. Yeah. Apparently, I can't do a double forward somersault on the trampoline without oh. hitting my knee on my nose. Oh, well, that's no good. What's yeah. wrong with your Steve? I know. No. Should, should try that again. Thing. Yeah. God, that was 40 years ago. Because I was yeah, 14. It's crazy. We used to we used to go stay at a – we got way off track here. <laughs> I know. We used to go stay at friends' places on the holidays and had a trampoline. Yeah. And we used to jump on the trampoline so much that by the time we got off at the end of the day, we couldn't walk. Oh, wow. Because our backs were just <laughs> we Jeez. Pressed our spines. So we, were, we used to get in trouble and we'd have to have a day off the trampoline and then we could go back to it the next day and then we'd be crawling off it and couldn't walk for a day. God, I hope my sister doesn't mind saying that, but she was on a trampoline in our backyard with, with a friend and she – they hit – a, a jaw came up and hit the the friend's head. Oh. She lost three teeth. <gasps> oh no! Yeah, oh, trampoline's, bad. trampoline's tragic. Yeah. But but you know, like gosh, when 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 the boy's seventeen, yeah. so that's why I had that that plastic surgery. I still have a funny nose now. It still gets blocked every now. And it's not. Yeah. It's sort of a weak point. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I mean that that's not. We're not talking about aesthetics because aesthetically yeah. my nose is whatever it is. I don't yeah, care. You tell. But. I would have still liked to breathe out of it. Yeah, well, that's right. That's what I mean. If it's yeah. an anatomical issue, then yeah. no. 100%. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the, the thing. So so going back to the lipo and, and getting rid of like, like surgical sort of interventions and facelifts and that, mm. you know, you and I aren't super duper fans. We'd rather exercise and all that sort of thing. Mm. But this podcast not about the, the – that's not, the next not one. Not about what we want. Yeah. <laughs> No, if, it's not about what we're doing in yeah, general, yeah. Let's say this, that we, we want to look better in our – It's look, it's spring now mm. when we're recording this. It's summer in a couple of uh, – three, three months. Say you wanted your skin to look better for summer because you're yeah. going to be showing more of it mm. down the beach. You want to look good in the bikini or whatever you're wearing. So how do you – like, like what, what, what can be done now that we can do to sort of try and – looking good in about two or three months you got any tips for the for the people who want their, their skin to look better I'll, I'll, I'll start you with one i want to ask you about niacinamide niacinamide yeah, yeah that's 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 vitamin b3 it's type of vitamin b3 we're going to be talking about a type of vitamin b3 or a type in our next podcast the internals the nad we're going to yep. be talking about which is kind of that's niacinamide of adenosine dinucleotide hydrogen for those who are listening at home yeah, but this is niacinamide yep what, 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 what good does that do? So it's actually been um, shown to be effective in the present, pre- prevention of skin cancer. Oof. So that's pretty big, isn't that's it? That's pretty huge because yeah. skin cancer, it looks bad, but also it can kill you. It can kill so you. So kind of a bit of a bad one, especially the melanomas. And the squam yeah. cell carcinomas and base cells are, are, are not as bad, but still not good. Mm. And, well, I, I have to say with skin cancers, when you're young, you don't think about it. I think I've spoken about it in the past. I was mm. a sun warrior. I was out in the sun all the time. It's not at the time that you need yeah. to worry about that. And when you're young, you don't think about it. But it's when you're in your 50s and 60s that these skin cancers actually start to come out. Yes. So you want to protect your skin when you're younger. Yep. 
Um, one for the anti-aging benefits of that. Obviously, too much sun, as you said, will cause ex um, accelerated aging, but also for preventing skin cancers down the track. Mm. So, so it's a good one, and it's one that my father-in-law, who's a skin doctor, mm. takes every day. Really? So, you know, he's onto that, and mm. and really, really important. Mm. Mm. Oh, it wasn't me this time. Mm, just knock, Steve the, knocking knock the, the microphone, microphone if you wonder what that weird sound <laughs> was. Um, so, so that's incredible, and that's just vitamin B three. Mm. You need it every day anyway. Yep, that's really good. So, okay, so so B three is a good solution. Um, what about uh, if you you know drinking teas? Are there any beneficial teas? For your skin, do you think you could you could do like like let's say a green tea, which yeah. contains epigallocatechin gallate? Yep. And what what is what are the polyphenols in green tea too for you? So they've been shown to protect you against sunburn as well. Wow. So okay. It's a UV radiation. Yep. Um, it's immunosuppressant. <clears throat> as okay. Well. Stop there a sec. Mm. Immunosuppressant people mm. are freaking out. Mm. They're, they're thinking Steve's that they're... pushing my camera. Oh, no. I'm just, He's pushing oh, me oh, off, off oh, front, out no, of frame. I'm just wobbling a bit. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> He's slowly, he slowly I just want all me the, I just want all the cameras on me, <laughs> of course. He's knocking his... It's usually me that's knocking all the equipment over. <laughs> oh, his feet were getting all... Falling asleep on me. <laughs> yeah, so it was... <laughs> Uh, All right, so so let's say no that I'm my voice. You're, you you are losing your voice. My yeah. voice is getting better as I go. It kind of doesn't sound as sexy anymore. <laughs> um, what am I talking about this? Well, we're um, just a train wreck today. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. So, so green tea, yeah, full of epigallium, catechin, yeah. gallate. Immunosuppression. Yeah, immunosuppression. Now, now people are <clears throat> uh, uh, like, like that sounds awful, mm. but but immunosuppression is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Because you don't want an overimmune system because it can cause autoimmune diseases. Yeah, that's right. And autoimmune disease of the skin can lead to um, like psoriasis mm -hmm. and it can lead to eczema and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this is really interesting stuff. Exactly. I've got a little bit of a study here. Yeah. What's the study? Um, Green tea. Um, so placebo-controlled trial in with 60 women with healthy skin. Um, so they consumed a uh, beverage with green tea polyphenols. Yep. They had less UV-induced skin redness and better overall skin characteristics. Specific skin variables that improved in the treatment group included elasticity, Ooh. roughness, scaling, yep. density, and hydration. Oh, so we all want that. We, we all want that. So, so it's a simple thing you can do now is to start drinking, drinking green tea before summer. Yeah. Um, because you're going to get caught in the sun every now and again. Like yeah. on the weekend, we w went to an event with, with ATP and, um, you know, I didn't know it was outside. Mm. <laughs> From where I was standing here all day in the freaking sun. Oh. And so, you know, it's sort of like I got a bit quicked. But um, yeah. that's why I'm quite as brown as a berry, like mm. like Greg Ritchie. I don't know, what's his name? What's his name? Richie Benno. Richie Benno. Greg Ritchie's the other batsman. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm quite quite brown as a berry today, which wow. is interesting. Brown so, and croaky. A croaky. Well, that's yeah. from talking to everyone over yeah. the loud music and, mm. you know, just, um, as I said, just sounding a bit croaky. <laughs> so, so, look, it's really good. Yeah. So, so that's a good little thing you can do. What about what if you if you're something with fatty acids? Well, you good this fatty is a acids? really good one. I love this. So omega three fatty acids. Mm. I love this, and I I swear by this. Mm. Being, um, I, I will um, prescribe omega threes a lot to people because I think a lot of people don't eat a lot of fish. Um, but omega three fatty acids for the skin, are fantastic. Um, I've taken them for a long time for my skin. Mm. Um, up until now, it's been good. I think as the aging is kicking in now. <laughs> yes. Up until now, it's been great. Um, so, so uh, omega threes are photoprotective, so protect against the sun. sun yeah. Um, Anti-skin aging, and they had anti-skin aging effects. So, in a control, this is a good one. In a control clinical trial, an omega three fatty acid supplement rich in EPA um, was found to protect against against immunos immunosuppression induced by solar stimulated UV radiation in human skin. Um, supplementation with fish oil rich in omega-3 fats modifies this fatty acid composition of cell membranes wow. um, by displacing the omega-3, uh, sorry, the omega-6 fatty, ac uh, fatty acid, so arachidonic acid, yep. which is quite inflammatory. Yep. Um, uh, so that led to a decline in the levels of arachidonic acid-derived prostaglandins. So mm -hmm. they're not, you don't want one of those. <coughs> sorry, I thought you were going to say something. You just uh, no, just, just coughing. coughing. Um... Uh, yeah, so uh, so cell signaling molecule. Oh my goodness, what is going on? A cell today? signaling molecule. Cell 
<laughs> signaling molecules can atten- intensify the inflammation and immunosuppression suppression generated following UV exposure. Mm. So if you're taking your omega three, it's going yeah. to be quite protective of those wow. processes. So um, I, I honestly, I, I love it for the skin. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's, 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 uh, for so many different reasons, and we're going to talk about it in, internally in the next one. Yeah. What we can do there as well, but. Um, omega threes is kind of a staple for me for the anti aging benefits and for everything else. And you mentioned does. EPA, which is a cosapentaenoic acid, which is yep. one of the the two oils in fish oil. So, mm, so do, do, they both have great benefits. So yeah. I, I'd just say take both EPA and DHA, oh, yeah. and, and, and they most usually of them, come they're usually EPA, together. DHA as well, they usually I usually prescribe. Well, I always prescribe both as yeah. well. So I was going to ask you about that because because in the early days I came up with an EPA rich one mm. uh, many years ago yeah. and. Um, but, but there's usually more EPA than DHA there in is. a fish oil supplement. Yeah, but DHA has so many benefits. So what, how many grams are you thinking for the average pundit out oh, there? Oh, look, I would say, I mean, I take four grams a day. So I would oh, yeah. say just as a maintenance, um, two grams a day. If you're having oily fish in your diet or, yeah. or omega-3s in your diet, it doesn't have to be oily fish. Um, oily fish is probably a little bit uh, easily more easily um, assimilated than, say, your plant-based omegas. They look great. You should yeah. include both. Mm-hmm. But two grams is just an average ma- yeah. average maintenance dose. Good. Um, you know, I can go quite high for some people, but there are some people that have a co- lot of inflammatory issues as well. It's mm-hmm. very good for inflammation. So two grams a day is great. Good good um, maintenance dose for that skin factor. Amazing. Now, now all right, we, we're going to talk about resveratrol down track a bit with our internal mm-hmm. aging. But for the skin... And hyaluronic acid. You want to talk about the link between resveratrol and hyaluronic acid? I mean, how cool is this one? Yeah. So resveratrol, we're going to talk about a lot in the next podcast because it's it does has amazing benefits in so many different pathways in the body, and we're going to talk about all that. But in regard to hyaluronic acid, so resveratrol actually boosts the HAS2 gene, yep, which makes the enzyme that makes strands of hyaluronic acid. Wow. So if you put in your resveratrol, you're actually Mm. going to boost the production of your hyaluronic acid anyway so putting the two together is like a powerhouse now that's incredible because because <clears throat> what what we've talked about today is you know of course and we, what we haven't gone through is the obvious which is look after your skin in other words don't yeah. go in the sun too long mm. and if you are try and you know cover up a bit yeah. sunscreen is a bit of a, a vexed issue so we, we we haven't sort of touched that it's for, for a different one mm. but try not to get excessive sun exposure but try and get some sun exposure some sun. i mean like i think i said in not a recent podcast 15 to 20 minutes a yep. day and you want to try and cover as much as your body as you yep. can so particularly areas that and this is for your vitamin d levels as well areas that don't get a lot of sun so your stomach if you don't walk around you know with, with your shirt off and things like that or um even that's sort of the underarm of your under of your arms so it's yeah. a little bit paler you'll absorb more vitamin d through oh, that paler go. skin it's why darker skin people struggle to absorb uh, to get vitamin d levels up so they can't oh. convert it because the darker your skin is the harder it is the Absolutely. conversion so 15 to 20 minutes a day is great really healthy so me going in naked in the backyard is not a bad thing as long as you've got big fences and no neighbours, Steve, then you know, might get reported otherwise. small fences and many neighbours. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yes, you get knock on the front door, do you know, not to do that. Maybe, maybe just leave your shirt on. Well, yeah. I swim semi-naked at the pools. I mean, men can take their shirt off. I mean, I mean, I mean that's like, you know. <laughs> men under the age of 50, maybe. Well, maybe. Oh, that, actually, no, when, when I swim at the pools, the outdoor pools in my place, um, you know, I'm basically wearing underwear. Mm. And, and so 90% of my body's, Exposed to the sun, it reflects. It's a great way to get a, a, a sun exposure as mm. well as exercise, yep. which is good for part two of this screw yep. part one, mm. um, without the excessive exposure. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's, it's time. Beach swimming. I mean, I go to the beach a lot. You know, in summer, I'm always at the beach. Um, oh, I used to be. Now I'm busy. I don't get to go as much. Well, you but. used to. In the olden days, do laps for a couple of hours. At oh the pool. yeah, I did when I lived out in the out in the middle. Of, I lived out in the bush, <laughs> and you? all that was there was a pool, and they had a twenty. It was a thirty three meter pool, I think it was. So I had to be, yeah. Um, I did laps for two three hours a day. It's so nuts. Was to do. So yeah, do you do those swimmers with a big well. cross on your back like that? Yeah, <laughs> I did. I, I look like even though I, my I had my swimmers. Cause I had my lap swimming swimmers on because yeah. you know, and then you take them off, and I had another pair on that were white. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, know, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I loved it. I, I love swimming, but ah. I go to the beach a lot now. I live near the beach. Uh, 
So it does my head in the swimming thing. I, do, I can't do it for more than 30, oh, 40 minutes. I love it. I love it. I, I could Jeez. just like swim all day. Really? Yeah, I love swimming so much. But, uh, yeah, I, can't, I don't do it. The black I don't do it a doesn't... lot anymore because of the chlorine. I have, yeah. uh, there's other issues around the chlorine mm. that I um, don't want to, to have too much of that. But there is ways to counter that as well. It might be a podcast in itself um, to detoxify the chlorine when you're in the pool oh, yeah. a lot. I, but, um, I, I like swimming at the beach, but I've got a problem with the sharks there. Oh, see, well, there's no sharks where I am. Oh, yeah. Because I live near um, uh, Fraser Island. Yeah. And Fraser Island protects the, yes. um, the bay. And you so get, the sharks don't come in. The sharks are out deep. They're way, way. So I could swim three k's out and not have a shark. Really? Yeah, it's great. God, yeah. on the Gold Coast where I am, there's shark nets, but people still get eaten down there. Yeah, no, I don't know. No, no. It's no. kind of like just be able to float around and know that nothing's going to come and chomp God. Me. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, what, what about what about we? Oh, let's get some some abstract thing. What, what about things like polypodium? Yeah. So okay. polypodium, um, leucotomus. Yep. Leucotomus. So that one is an interesting one. I personally hadn't really heard about this until I did so did some research. So this one acts an, as an antioxidant, photoprotectant. Um, anti-mutagenic, so anti-cancerous, anti-inflammatory and immunoregulator. Wow. So you can take it internally and also externally. Externally, yeah. um, And it's effective both ways. So that's a a kind of a a random one that's shown to have some good, a good level of research around it as well. All right. Um, So, yeah, prevents fat aging also. So that's a really good one. Um, What else have I got here? Well, some general dietary advice. What what, what happens if you have too many sugars and too much glycation? Oh, yeah. So you'll end up with something called ages. Ages, I love it. (laughs) Advanced glycation end products. Yeah. And that actually is when when the um, collagen and the the proteins and everything sort of kind of stick together and it causes your skin to become quite um, rigid. Yeah, cross links, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, so um, sugar (laughs) is what causes ages. Yeah. So... And, you know, when they say sugar's bad for you, sugar causes ageing. It does. It ages your Danger. skin quite significantly. So sugar is something you really want to avoid to protect the age of your skin and stop these advanced glycation end products from developing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, you know, sugar's bad for your teeth, bad for everything, but it's now bad for your skin and bad for your yeah. appearance. Now, now, you know, again, we, we, we know it's bad for your body, but we, we, we're focusing on the skin here, so it, yeah. it ages you. And this is probably something sugar. This is like people go, oh, I don't eat sugar, but I have fruit loose for breakfast. Fruit loose? What? They don't eat sugar, but they have they fruit don't loose have, for breakfast. I've heard people say really? they don't eat sugar, but they eat fruit loose projected without really? sugar. And, I mean, how much sugar is in fruit loose? there's loops? no sugar in it. There's about fifty percent of Fruit Loops are made of sugar. No, I realise that, but I didn't know that no one else realised. Oh, that peop- some people don't realise. And, and even if you had, like, say, wheat bix that has ninety-seven percent sugar-free or three yeah. percent sugar, yeah. that still turns into sugar in the body. Well, any I, look, I don't really go for any. Don't like any breakfast cereals, to mm. be honest. Even the ones they say are healthy. It's a refined mm. carbohydrate. Yeah. Essentially, it turns, like you said, turns to sugar very yeah. quickly. It spikes your blood sugars and it can cause the uh, ages on yep. your skin. So any of those types of sugars, and um, yeah, we're actually going to do a podcast on sugars, uh, labels, I think we're going to do, oh, and, yeah. and all the different ways that they, they label sugar so yep. it doesn't sound like sugar. So yep. that's going to be an interesting one. But yeah, sugar are terrible for your skin. Yeah. So we, we want to avoid that as much as possible. Um, so, so it's very, very interesting. And, and we've talked about um, diet a little bit now, but, but what does fasting do? Because fasting, fasting is a amazing. very interesting one because yeah. fasting means you're not eating. That's right. But so you can't yeah. eat forever. But, but yep. when, when you have like long fasts, like 16 to 18 hours, what does that do to your mm. body? So that turns on a process called um, AMPK. AMPK. Yeah. <laughs> so adenosine, adenosine monophosphate kinase. Yep. yep. Um, so, that, so we're going to talk all about AMPK and mTOR yep. in our next podcast. Yep. But fasting, so when we're talking about diet or when we're losing mm. some weight, fasting can be really good for losing weight because it activates this pathway AMPK. Yeah. Um, so, and that has so many different amazing processes in itself which you're going to have to listen to the next one to find out all about that we're going to amazing, keep yeah. you in, on, in suspenders for that one um but yeah so so fasting or time restricted eating so yeah. uh, people say they fast fasting to me is more than 24 hours without eating so that's oh. my idea of a fast other apart from that it's more time restricted eating so mm. whether you're doing either of those but um, even a 16-hour fast can still have a lot of benefits. Yeah. It, it definitely activates your AMPK yeah. um, and upregulates all these amazing processes that mm. we're going to talk about. Um, so, so that's really good. But I've got something I want to talk about, Steve. What? Hair. What are you you're looking at me when you say that? I am looking at you, Steve, because you've got a few of these problems. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so, <laughs> for, for those who are watching, it's obvious, but I am going a bit bald and a just bit. Just a bit salt and peppery. Ah, so oh, that's good. Yeah, but uh, but you're doing pretty well because I, some people are completely grey by the time they're mid forties. So I think you're doing yeah. great. So um, greying. I mean, who does? You going to talk about RF four here? I am going to talk RF IRF four. Good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> going to talk about that. Go for it. Um, <clears throat> so greying. So. And we're talking about premature again because obviously graying that show, yeah. you look older when you go grey. Um, so it's mainly a genetically, predetermined genetically. So if you have your whole family is greys early, then you're more likely to go grey early. Um, mm. But I will say my mum, I hopefully won't listen to this, <laughs> um, <laughs> and her whole side of the family have, were white by the time they were in their early 20s, ah. the whole, whole lot. And even my cousins um, on that side are prematurely greyed. But on my side, um, I must have taken up to my father, so I haven't gone grey at all. I'm starting to get a few grey hairs, <laughs> let's be honest. I'm looking at you very few, close I, have yeah. a, I only have a few, though. Um, compared to my mum, who, who literally was 23 or something, I think she said she was dying her hair from when she was 21. Wow. Um, completely white. So that's genetically, there's something genetically there that's causing them to go grey. So that's part of it. But the other part of it is there's oxidative stress. And ah. oxidative damage in the body can cause you to go grey. Wow. You've heard people say, oh, I'm so stressed I went grey. Yes. So that actually can actually happen. So what, what happens is it turns on, so it brings in some oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. um, and then the more oxidative stress you have, you will start to produce more um, uh, hydro, uh, hydrogen peroxide. Yep. So when you were young, you know, get the old hydrogen peroxide out and dye your hair. It bleaches your hair, right? I know. I used to dip my rat tail in it. <laughs> Please tell I'm not me joking. I had a rat, a rat tail. tail. Of course I did. Who else did you pick oh, up the chicks no. without a rat tail? <laughs> yeah, that's true. We used to plant it. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> and bleach it. You, you get the bottle and you just dip it. Yeah, my mates used to. Oh, it's the only I, thing actually, I ever... look, I shouldn't, like, I shouldn't laugh because I think rat's tails come back in. Oh, really? I feel like I've seen people around with rat's tails. I don't know. There's lots of strange hairdos around these days. But the, well, the mullet's back. So, oh, awesome. Yeah, the mullet's back. I was so cool with my mullet in the early 80s. I know the kids have got the mullets and they think it's like the, the next big big thing. And I'm like, no, dude, <laughs> that was around 30 years ago. Yeah, the mullet. 30 plus years yeah. ago for me. But the rat's tail, yeah. Well, I, ble I bleached my – I've never ever had changed my hair colour. Um, like I've never yeah. got blonde ever. I've seen some people there. But I used to put little streaks in it. And there used to be something called sun in. And really? you spray it on and you go out in the sun and it bleaches your hair. Huh. So anyway, that's hydrogen peroxide bleaches yeah. your hair. So you will produce a little bit of hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide um, and then uh, oxidative st <laughs> stress will actually cause that more of that production. So it will turn the hair grey or white if yeah. you're under stress. And then if you can reduce that oxidative stress, get in some anti-inflammatories and things like that, um, the, the hair can actually go get the colour back again. So the melanin mm. will start to be produced in the, in, the, um, in the hair again, hair shaft again. So, um, so stress mm. can cause it, and but if you are graying prematurely and you don't have sort of a family history, then I'd be looking at inflammation, oxidative stress, what, yeah. what is causing that graying. Um, and there is a way you can work on reversing that somewhat. Tell me, I'm listening. So I use a thing, something um, a lot of clients call glutathione. Ah. So we produce glutathione. It's one mm. of our master antioxidants. It is. Um, and, and if you have a lot of oxidative stress, you will burn through glutathione because your body is trying to detoxify whatever it is that's causing this oxidative damage, oxidative stress. Yeah. Um, so you will you will have very very low stores of glutathione. So uh, bringing in glutathione can actually help to reverse grey hair and wow. prevent grey hair. Also, as you get Where's older. My pain? Yeah. <laughs> I, t I, I, do, I take it. I take it for um, for antioxidant status and all that sort of thing. I put. A lot of clients on it as well. Um, liposomal glutathione. So you don't just run out and get any glutathione. Mm. It has to be, it's quite unstable. So it will break down in the gut and you mm. won't absorb a lot of it. So liposomal form is very good because it will get down in, to where it needs to go um, without being uh, your digestive system just um, breaking it down and making mm. it inactive. So liposomal reduced, reduced glutathione in a liposomal form is the best one to get. Um, really good for hair. 
Okay. Yeah. So anyone that's got a few little grey hairs and they don't... I've got a few little ones, I'll be honest. You've got a few little ones, Steve. I reckon we could pretty much just get some, whip out some glutathione and be all over it. I've got to whip out a, a razor blade, I think, to get rid of my grey hair. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I'm 54, so it, it's kind of normal for me and it's kind of... Yeah. What's his name? George Clooney made it uh, kind of cool. It's the silver fox sort of look. Yeah, like yeah. I look like George I mean, George that's Clooney, the unfair anyway. thing. Men, they get the grey hair and they look all debonair. No, I don't. I look but like women, shit. women, and they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you wear it well, Steve. I, 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 my hair's, yeah. You, you, wear, you wear your hair well. No, you wear the grey well. So, yeah. You well, no, wear it well. It's a lot of work put into the grey. That's, well, that's right. It's a lot of effort in that. I'm married now, so that's where the grey hair's come that's from. That's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shout out to the wife out there. Hey, Beck. What a glutathione. I'm going to cop this one. What did you say, man? <laughs> but yeah, so glutathione. And um, another thing that we talked about before, what? Verisol. Oh, Verisol, yeah. Good for hair growth. So yeah. if you've got thinning hair, and which can happen when you're aging as well, yeah. um, Verisol is very good for hair regrowth as well. Wow. So not only good for skin, but yeah. for hair. So, so it's, an old, it's an old person's growth. substance, isn't it? Yeah. Verisol. Oh, totally it is. Yeah, Verisol. It's amazing. So, so let's go through what we've done. We've, we talked about Verisol. That's the type of collagen. It's for your skin and hair. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about hyaluronic acid supplement and resveratrol that boosts it. Mm -hmm. We've talked about astaxanthin at about four milligrams. Mm -hmm. So they're the real key ones there. Yeah. And you also got into the fish oils there, yep, two to four oils. grams a day, yep. particularly EPA. Yep. Um, polygonum, which is that, that herb, which is great for your skin. Nicotinamide. Yep, nicotinamide for your, mm -hmm. for your preventing skin damage. Green tea. Green tea. Um, and what else have I forgotten? Botox is if you want, but, but just resveratrol. those. Resveratrol. Mm -hmm. Just think of those supplements. If you can get there, they're very good for you anyway, yeah. but they're great for your skin before you start to put needles in your face. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Speaking of needles in your face, we didn't talk about that. That, um, uh, what do they call it? Needling. Skin oh, yeah. Needling. Skin needling. So they're just punching like yeah, millions micro of holes, tiny yeah. holes. Yeah. Apparently that. It doesn't have a lot of really good long-term anti-aging benefits either. Okay, at least look better. Know. Yeah, you yeah, get a red face better. after That's it. Right. Bex had it a few times. Yeah, and microdermabrasion, skipping yes. rid of the old stuff. Yeah, yeah, a few of those. So I mean, look into those. But but you look, if you're looking for supplements um, that can help, um, they're definitely a lot of the ones we've talked about. Get onto those lifestyle, as we said, no mm. smoking either. Really, oh age yeah, skin significant. Really Alcohol bad for wrinkles. Well, age of skin. Mm. The sugar, as we said, the sun. Yep. Um, pollution as well. So you know, if you live in a really highly polluted area, um, that's going to affect your skin as well. So people, you know, some people that live under near freeways and things like that, and they get of the car fumes. Yeah. Those sorts of um, right. pollutants can actually affect your skin as well. So you want to make sure you're having. Um, upping your antioxidants and all that sort of thing to try to counteract some of those pollutants that you're that you're getting through your skin and obviously breathing in as well. It's, it's amazing because the old skin. Australian adage of going down the beach with an esky um, or a chilibun if you're in New Zealand, a having having your, <laughs> your ice creams down the beach there in the sun, so having a fag. You allowed to smoke at the beach anymore? No, I don't think you're allowed to smoke anywhere anymore. Oh, oh thank God. Not. But I mean, smoke. that's the most aging thing you can do, and it's the most stereotypical Australian thing yes. to do. When I was growing up. Mm. Everybody did that. Now, I know smoking is the most, and should be evil thing now, mm. but imagine how much we prematurely aged in my generation. Yeah. You know, know. Gen Xs. Yeah. Just from doing that. And, and now we've got things we can help it and reverse it and change it and mm. turn it around for ourselves. And, I, and and again, these are all things that, apart from Botox, that we can do. And, and, and they're now new treatments mm. like... You know, I'm not an anti-laser for your fat or anti-fat no. cavitation. If you want to look better that way, mm. tighten up your skin and get rid of the fat there, yeah. go for it. I mean, lipo is a, you know, <laughs> possibility. It sounds but like there might be better things out there now. Maybe a little, little, less, little less painful anyway. Well, you'd start by hitting the gym and exercise. That activates anti-aging genes. It does, we're going to talk, about talk about that. Next that's... podcast. Yep. But, but, I mean, those simple supplementation things with simple things we can do to stop smoking and that, Stop eating sugar and junk food. Mm. I think is a great start to to looking a lot younger. Yeah, hundred percent, and mm. so easy. And and all all of those uh, supplements that we talked about are readily available. Yep. So go look for those, especially those top three that you said. Steve. Yeah, they're they're my t the Verisol, the astaxanthin, and the hyaluronic acid. They're they're the kick ass mm. ones. Yeah. And get into those. Vitamin C is good for the skin too because it, it turns proline into hydroxyproline. Oh, we didn't talk about vitamin C. Damn yeah, it! I know vitamin C is great for the skin as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great for the skin, zinc, yeah. and all these other things. Mm. But we tried to keep it to the to the really 
you know, nifty stuff with the data on it. So that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. But next podcast, we're going to talk about anti aging yeah, body. Part two, people, watch out, watch out for part two. All the internal stuff and a lot of the pathways we're going to talk about, as we said, AMP K, mTOR, the, how to, to sort of balance those two. You sound like a out. nerd now, Nick. I do sound like a nerd. The next one's going to be a lot of nerdy stuff, uh, it, but really cool and interesting yeah. stuff. And things Don't worry. Do. We're still going to give you the easy answer, take home message of what to do. Yeah, yeah. A lot of um, these things. And, and everything we talk about, there is solutions that you can do that are very Yes, simple. like today. Yeah, lots of supplements and things that we will uh, rec- that we will talk about that they're readily available. So there's a lot that you can take away from the next one as well. Now, next one's going to be a fun one for the internal one, and, and but yeah. but I think the external one's important because it's yeah. a multi billion dollar industry. It is. You yeah. know, you you and I when we were talking about this, go like, ah, oh, you know, it's kind of it'll be alright. But this is a multi billion dollar industry, and um, I think people want to look better, and I think it's better to do it naturally and safely. Definitely, and we'll talk about that and talk about when you should start as well. Talk about yep. all that next in the start. next part two. The be- best time to start yesterday, second best time to stay. That's right. All right. Well, yeah. until next week, we'll see you then. Yeah, see ya. See ya.